omitted by accident. So um, if you are visiting St. Michael, we welcome you. Um, um, and we thank you for being here on this little bit unusual of, of a Sunday morning. Um, and looking at this gospel reading where we have Jesus confronted by the leper, all I could really think of was these old movies I used to watch when I was a kid. I was a strange kid. I loved classic movies. The bigger the epic, the better. Give me Charlton Heston as Moses any day of the week, and I was happy. Um, and most of us don't have any kind of reference for what being a leper or what leprosy was. And my first memory of having any concept of what a leper was was from watching Charlton Heston in the movie Ben Hur. Um, it's, most everybody, I'm sure, has probably seen it. It's the story of Judah Ben Hur, a well-to-do Jewish man who gets sold off into slavery, saves a Roman general, becomes a Roman citizen, and comes back and has this epic race, chariot race, against his arch rival, um, in which he is victorious. But in that movie, while Judah Ben Hur was off uh, rowing the galley ships and and becoming a charioteer, we also learn that his mother and sister were thrown into prison. And while in prison, they get leprosy. And so when Ben-Hur comes back triumphant, and when he wins the chariot race, all of that is tempered by he finds out that his mother and sister are not dead. They're living in a leper colony outside of the city. Something worse than death. They've been removed from the community, from their family, and he goes out, and it doesn't matter how powerful he is, there's nothing that he can do to save his mother and his sister. And the image that comes from that, I remember being terrified as a child, because you see the mother and the sister and the lepers in the leper colony wrapped in bandages, and they cover their faces. Um, and as a kid, I had really no idea of what was going on. But when I read these gospel readings, when they talk about lepers or persons with leprosy, that's the first image that comes to my mind, is this horrible place outside of the community, a place that it would be better if Judah and her mother and sister were dead than for them to have been there. Mm -hmm. And that's the man that we get when Jesus is walking along the road. I mean, that's the image we get. Here's somebody that has been cast so far out of society and is angry about it. He doesn't necessarily plead with Jesus to heal him. He challenges him. He says, if you choose to do it, I know you can do it. This isn't, I mean, he's not necessarily begging. We know that he's kneeling and he's coming to Jesus, but he's angry. And the interesting response is, we get in this translation that Jesus was moved with pity. But the, and th that doesn't capture the emotion that is really there in the original Greek of this gospel. It can also mean that he was angry that he was moved with anger, that here was this person cast out from society that now has to come to him and say, if you choose to, you can make me clean. Now the lepers that we have in Ben-Hur and leprosy that we've come to understand that's still prevalent, there are still thousands of leper colonies in India and China, is thought not necessarily to be the same leprosy that gets referenced in the gospel. It's the very technical medical term is Tansen's disease, is what we think of leprosy now. But leprosy then, leprosy literally means rough and scaly. So it could have been somebody with a skin condition, but what it most importantly means that it is somebody that is considered to be ritually unclean. That for whatever reason, condition of health or lifestyle, they have been removed from the community. They have been cast out. And in some cases, they could go through a process to where the priest in the temple would say, you are now clean, come back home. And in this case, this leper had not been received back through the priest. It took this confrontation with Jesus on the road for him to be made clean. Now, the leper's not necessarily a great example for us, I guess, because Jesus tells him to keep his mouth shut, and he can't do it. I mean, it's like he's gotten the best secret that he's ever heard. You know, this man has healed me, and he goes out, and he tells everybody about it, and that means Jesus has to get out of town. 
If you look, you know, we're in the first chapter of Mark. Jesus has gotten born. John the Baptist has proclaimed he's the Son of God. John the Baptist has been killed. Jesus has been moving through the towns of Judea. Crowds are beginning to gather. It is getting increasingly more dangerous for Jesus. A very real possibility that he could meet the same fate as John the Baptist. And here's this guy that he makes the decision to make clean that goes and runs his mouth about. Not the consequence that Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted to continue to move through the crowds. He didn't want to have to go out into the country. He didn't want to, in a sense, by making the leper clean, take on the leper's role. Because now Jesus is outside of the community. He can't go back into town. He goes out to the country and folks follow him. This notion of people that are outside of our community, if we think of it as lepers, that's a little hard for us to get. We don't have lepers in lepers or lepers. I don't think we have lepers in Fayette. <laughs> in Fayette, we don't have them in Tuscaloosa. You know, we just don't have this type of thing. But we do have people that, for whatever reason, have been cast out of our communities. We don't have to look very far to find folks that society has said should not be included. On Tuesday, there's going to be a rally in Montgomery against the most recent immigration law. There will be Episcopal priests and Episcopalians there. Uh, Bishop Parsley, um, before his retirement, took part in a lawsuit to challenge the immigration law. In one sense, we have made folks that are in this country with uncertain status lepers. And in Alabama, we have chosen to drive them out of our communities. And whether, and many folks don't agree with what the church is taking a stance on, or they question it, and we should question it and engage with that. But what you see that's going to happen on Tuesday is an effort for the church to say, we, are, we want to include these people in our community. We don't want to drive them out. The Episcopal Church gets a lot of flack. Even we're going to get more flack after the summer, after general convention. We've taken on this wacky notion of we are the church and we are to include everyone completely and fully into the body of our community. And we're still figuring out what that means. But we know that for immigrants, it means we help them. For the elderly, we help them. We visit folks in prison. We include gays and lesbians in the life of the church. And we struggle forward even if it means that we become cast out just like the people we try to help. And in this story, I think we have the ultimate challenge to the church. The leper is saying what undocumented <coughs> workers are saying, what people in prison are saying, what people that are poor and hungry are saying. If you choose, you can make me clean. You can include me into the body of the church. You can reach out and bring the reconciling love of Jesus Christ to me if you choose. The church is considered the body of Christ. Teresa of Avila is a wonderful, she says it much prettier, it's a poem, but what it essentially comes down to is Jesus has no body on earth now but ours. He has no hands, no feet, no eyes to look out compassion on the world but ours. We don't have lepers in Fayette County, but we do have people that are outsiders. We do have people that stand up and challenge us and say, if you choose, you can make me clean. It's a heavy burden to bear, and it has consequences, and it had consequences for Jesus when he did it. When Bishop Sloan was here, he talked about our baptismal covenant. We never have the audacity to say that we can do it except we can do it with God's help. As you go through this week, consider who are the outsiders at work, school, wherever you go. And listen for that challenge of, if you choose to do this, you can make me clean. And think about the decision that Jesus made. It was very simple. It didn't even involve bathing seven times in the Jordan River. He chose to reach out and touch the man. And he said, I choose to be made clean. 
It's hard and it has consequences, but it's what we are called to do. It is what our baptismal covenant is to do. So think about this reading this week. Think about the outcast and think about what we as a church in St. Michael's can do, what you individually can do, what the national church is called to do, because we are faced with many difficult decisions. And we are faced with the fact that we do have to make a choice to either reach out or to say no. And that we know that whatever decision we make, we have to do so with God's help. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Amen.